so now i'll be sharing the chapter fluids which is chapter 4 of class 9th so they given something called uh, thrust pressure everything right yes so thrust is basically my force okay what is in general what is thrust it is just force so it is not something new to us thrust is just force that is the first thing we have to keep it in mind correct and then pressure is written here right what is pressure basically for example my hand is there i am putting it on the camera here with a force and i am occupying some area correct so what is my pressure or else if i am stomping with my leg on the ground i am occupying some area of the ground right there is force per i am applying some force to that particular area so what is my pressure basically force per unit area i'll draw triangle then you'll be able to understand much better one second i'll draw triangle yeah then you will be able to understand it very easily because thrust is something which we don't use in our daily life but force and all we might use it in the day to day lives so my f is my force p is my pressure a is my area so pressure is was what force per unit area f by a p is equal to f by a force per unit area again in class 11th also you got a chapter called mechanical properties of solids and fluids okay so there also we will use pressure stress and all so again pressure is force per unit area in again in our day to day life you use what stress also correct too much of studies and too much of work is there obviously it will create pressure and stress so what is stress force per unit area okay so stress is stress and pressure both are the same actually force per unit area but now what they told us thrust thrust per unit area so force and thrust is almost the same only depend only difference between thrust and force is force acting perpendicular to a surface Okay, if a force is acting perpendicular to the surface, it is called what thrust. That's only thing. End of the day, thrust is just force. That's all. Okay, fine. And that is the thing given here. Lesser is the area, more is the pressure. So that is from this triangle only we are getting it. Correct. Pressure is equal to force per unit area F by A. So obviously, pressure is inversely proportional to what area. Pressure is directly proportional to what force. So, if more pressure, less area, and more force, that's all. Correct. A is my area. F is my force. I'll just draw, write it down for you. A is my area. F is my force. And P is my pressure. this a is nothing but my area here a is area f is force okay and p is my pressure fine so i hope you understand this then coming to the point by point what i have written down here okay so liquid exert pressure on the walls of the container pressure exerted by the liquid increases with depth liquid exert equal pressure with same depth okay so all of these things can be proved with the formula so i'm just going to clear it p is equal to h rho g again coming to rho rho is called density density is nothing but mass by volume again i'll draw triangle with this i'll try to draw it
always remember what is there on the top density mass and here it is volume so density is nothing but mass by volume okay and this piece is about h rho g this rho is called density this symbol density symbol is this symbol like p they are written down here right p is equal to we just yeah yeah we can find it here i think i'll use arrow mark this one this is my rho symbol density h rho g h is the height of the column and g is acceleration due to gravity okay so what they're trying to tell is pressure is directly proportional to what height directly proportional to the height so with more height pressure also will increase that is due to the depth increase in depth increases the pressure that is my first line here pressure except by liquids increases with depth. okay and fluid i think what do you know what is a fluid which is a substance which can flow and has got no fixed shape pascal's law again seeing the diagram only we should be able to understand okay just go through the diagram properly without reading anything yeah the spelling of p that is the raw uh its pronunciation is i can say r a w you can say it's raw r o w r a w whatever it is it's a raw basically r h a w also some in book is given and coming to the pascal's law what is written here when pressure is applied on a fluid it's transmitted equally in all directions in the sense you can see here the pressure correct these are the knobs and everything and these are the holes here correct when a pressure is up and this full thing is fluid so when a pressure is applied on a fluid what happens if there is water in this the water will be escaping through each and every hole equally okay and always this pressure acts on what the pressure will be acting on right angles so if there is a hole correct and if this is rotating if this particular machine is rotating then what happens all the liquid will be flowing through what each four holes equally there is a thing but my pascal slow so where do we use in hydraulic press hydraulic brakes and hydraulic lift respectively then the last thing is atmospheric pressure so the pressure or the force exerted by the air surrounding the earth on a unit surface area that is called my atmospheric pressure atm and the unit of atmospheric pressure is pascal this is 1 lakh pascal pa is pascal so what pascal's law says that when a pressure is applied in fluid it is transmitted equally in all direction irrespective of the area or which it acts okay so the fluid again flows equally in all direction that is what pascal law states then coming to barometer here an instrument used to measure what atmospheric pressure so obviously this pressure will change with respect to height pressure height temperature and all then coming to the next part is what liquid pressure okay so the same thing whatever i explained the most important thing is pressure increases with depth and pressure is equally divided below its surface that is below the surface of the liquid and pressure remains same in a given depth and pressure exerted on the sides of the wall so on the wall side we can experience more pressure by the gas yeah and what about doubts are there i'll be clearing at the end of the session yeah so note down your doubts properly pressure exerted by the gases so gas also exerted what pressure on the walls so same thing there is no much difference between the liquid and the gases increase in the volume lowers the pressure 
because density is equal to mass by volume, right? Correct. So obviously, if I increase the volume, pressure will be less. Decreasing the volume increases the pressure. So same thing. Whatever I increasing the pressure decreases the volume. Same points only they are told in four or five things. Hydraulic machines. I told you the example or application of Pascal's law is what hydraulic machine. So that is nothing but where do I use it? Hydraulic lift, hydraulic brake, and all. So that the fluid will be transmitted equally in all directions. That's only the purpose of the hydraulic machine. Yes. And again, coming to the barometer. Okay. So what is, is the purpose of barometer basically? To measure the atmospheric pressure. What is the use of barometer? To measure the atmospheric pressure. I think you guys will be clear about it. Or is it the first time? Let me know. Yeah. So what about in uh, liquid pressure? How do we measure the liquid pressure? I think you rightly said in the chat, yes, manometer, correct? Yes, manometer is the, and what is the, what is the principle used in the manometer? It is, it uses the principle of what balancing the column of liquid. Okay, so that is a method and that is not there in the syllabus for you. Yeah. It's not there in the syllabus, so no need to worry. It is not even there in class 12th also. The, but you just know the names of it. Manometer, barometer and all. So I'll just uh, write it down. Barometer for atmospheric pressure. Manometer for liquid pressure. That's only two things. Okay, then I'll gonna clear it. So again, uses we have to just read it and just understand. And one more thing is altimeter to measure the altitude. Correct. So mainly using the aircraft to measure the altitude from the sea level. Then buoyancy. Okay, buoyancy is nothing but there is something called buoyant force. And this is mainly used by Archimedes. This is very, very important. The density and mass we already we have discussed. Yeah. So, for example, let's say we are in a pond or in a lake. Okay, and we are getting immersed. Okay, so the person who doesn't know swimming or knows swimming, obviously what, there is a force which will help us to come up of the water one time. Correct? Whatever might be the force, there will be an upward force by the water. So that force is called what? Buoyant force. Because whenever I'm getting immersed in the water, my full body weight Correct, it is displacing the liquid from that area, right? So that particular force is coming on me, yeah, and put pushing my body out of the water to regain its space. That force is called what? The buoyant force. Okay, so the buoyant force is nothing but volume of the object immersed in liquid to density of the liquid and acceleration due to the gravity. This is the reason why an object immersed in water weighs compared less then it's weight when it is outside in water. That's the reason we might vote. Archimedes principle. So to measure the purity of milk, we use a device called lactometer. 
correct and what he states is upward force experience of body immersed in fluid is equal to the weight of the displaced fluid in the sense upward force so whenever i am in water or let's take if you are going to a swimming pool and if you are diving then what happens our body is getting what we are displacing some amount of liquid that is the water over there so obviously that water want to displace us out of the water correct out of the particular swimming pool or whatever it is so it will try to throw us out that is the upward force okay so this is done by archimedes principle density mass by volume already told you with the triangle relative density we will have problems based on it again we have to do the problems now so these are all the problem based thing which we have to do it and flotation flotation is when the weight of the body is more than the buoyant force the body will drown when the weight of the body is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced the body will float when the weight of the body is less than the fluid displaced then the body will not drown in water even if a force is applied on it to drown it will come up as soon as the force is this is the flotation process so we can see the stable unstable and unstable equilibrium is nothing but the rate of flow of what product in reactants so in this case the body immerses in the water and the water trying to displace us so this is the theoretical thing but there are a lot of problems to be done so that's it for the session